สวัสดีค่ะ Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. So today I am excited to bring you yet another absolute classic street food dish in Thailand. I mean, this is one of the poster child of Thai street food dishes, and it's something called Khao Mu Dang. Khao is rice, and Mu Dang is our term for Chinese barbecue pork or Cha Siu. And it literally translates to red pork, by the way, because of the color of the pork. So if you're thinking, well, it's just Cha Siu on rice, what's the big deal? No, 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 no. The thing that makes this dish unique and delicious is the gravy that goes on top of the chashu and the rice, and it just—it's just so wonderful. One of my absolute favorite things to eat as a kid. Super kid friendly because it is not spicy. Now I have a chashu recipe already. Many of you know it. If you already make that, you like it, you can stick with that recipe. I'm going to show you another version today that's more commonly done by Thai street vendors. I think it's a little bit simpler, so either one will work. Let's get started. So let's talk about pork first. So in the traditional Chinese style c h a s u most of the time they use pork butt or pork shoulder, which is sort of flavorful and fatty, and it's great for that. But in Thailand, we actually like to use something leaner, pork loin, which is okay even though it's leaner because we have all that gravy, right? So it's not going to be dry. So what I started with is a pork loin roast. So think pork chops. But not cut, like stuck together. And you, you know, I get one that's about two pound, and then I break it down lengthwise into about four to five pieces, so that you get something that's you know two inches by one inch per side. Also, the pork loin will generally have a fat cap, so if you're going to cut it, cut it in such a way that each of your piece have a little bit of fat in it, because that fat, when you roast, it's going to keep everything moist and delicious. All right, so now that you've cut it into sort of pieces like this. Let's deal with the marinade. The marinade, super simple, but it is quite a few ingredients. The first thing we're going to add is just soy sauce. Now I'm going to use another type of soy sauce, which you see me use all the time, and that is Golden Mountain sauce, or in Thai, what we call seasoning sauce. It's just a different kind of soy sauce, but in this situation, I feel it really does make a difference. So if you can get a hold of it. Or if not, uh, Maggi seasoning or even Brax liquid amino has a very similar flavor to this. So at the very least, get two different types of soy sauces that taste a little different. Okay. Now to make it a little bit darker, I'm going to add also black soy sauce, Thai black soy sauce, for sweetness. Honey, honey. It's going to make the pork shiny. It's going to help browning. It's going to add nice flavor. And then toasted sesame oil. This is also very important in adding that flavor. I got some ground white pepper, and the most important thing, you can omit. Not everything. You can omit certain things, but this you cannot omit. Without this, it is no longer c h a s u It's just marinated pork. Okay, and that is five spice powder. You can buy it, but if you have A, you know, cabinet full of whole spices. You can also just make it yourself. I do have a recipe for that. I will link to it. That's gonna go in, and then just some grated, smashed, minced garlic. You can even do garlic powder if you're lazy. Oh, oh my goodness! I almost forgot the thing that is going to turn this into mu dang. The the dang thing, the red thing that's going to turn this from just mu to mu dang. Okay, is. Food coloring, yeah. So the traditional c h a s u they use red fermented tofu, which is what I used in my original recipe. But in Thailand, we don't generally use that, you know, as recipes morph. But we always add some red food coloring, um, which you don't have to add if you don't care about it actually being red. But you know, and I just add. Five to ten drops. It depends on the brand. I find like some red food coloring is very intense. So now all you have to do is just pour this onto the pork. Whee! You can use like a Ziploc bag. That would be good. But if you're gonna use a dish like this, make sure the pork fits just perfectly in it. Because if you use a dish that's large, then you know you have a lot of pooling liquid that's not really touching the pork. So you want all that marinade to be in touch with the pork as much as possible. So just give everybody a nice bath. Give this at least 24 hours, okay? But what you want to do is come back and turn it halfway through, just so that this exposed part gets evenly distributed. This is why I generally prefer using a Ziploc bag because it. Sort of, you know, there's not as much exposed part. So, 24 hours later, your casserole dish will magically turn into Ziploc bags. So anyway, so this is one that I did yesterday, 
And so we're just going to roast it now. This is really simple. You marinate it, you roast, you make the gravy, easy peasy. Um, I like to roast it on a rack so that it gets heat all the way through and line the bottom with some foil so it's easier clean up. If the piece has a fat side and a lean side, put the fat side on top. So as the fat melts in the oven, it will bathe the rest of the piece with the fat. This is going into the oven at 400 degree Fahrenheit or 200 degree, um, 200 degree Celsius, can't speak today, for about 30 minutes or until the inside reaches a temperature about 155, which will then carry over to about 160, which will be fully cooked. So while your pork is roasting in the oven, if you haven't started your rice, make sure it is going right now so you don't forget about it. And then we're going to make the gravy. This is, this is it right here. This is the key of this dish. Some pork stock. So this is just unsalted pork stock. I have a recipe for it, but basically you just boil some pork bones. You can get pork bones at Asian butchers. You can do chicken stock. Make it unsalted so you have lots of room to add new flavors. If it's already salty, you can only add a little bit more of extra flavor and that's not good. Okay, and then I'm also going to add all of this pork marinade right here. I'm going to bring this to a boil. And we're going to cook all of that pork juices. So while that's going, let's do some other things. I'm going to pound up some toasted sesame seeds. The deeper the toast, the deeper the flavor. And I'm just going to crush, but I don't want them ground, okay? But if you don't crush them, then all the flavor is sort of like trapped inside and it's not going to come out and mingle with the gravy. So that's it. That's all you do. Like literally five, six crushes. You hear some of them breaking and then you can smell it. That's the key. And then the next thing I'm going to add to my mordant pestle is a fermented soybean paste, what we call tau tiao. So this is basically Thai miso. It's our version of miso, except the soybeans are still whole. So I have to mash it first before we can put it in. Otherwise, you get chunks of saltiness. Um, you can absolutely use uh, miso instead or even the Korean donjang miso, in which case you don't have to mash it. So just get all those beans crushed. So the broth is boiling and what you're going to notice that it right now looks very appetizing mm, with all the basically cooked pork juices. So what you want to do is you're going to skim off all this off. Mm, yummy. I'm sure that's lovely protein. I mean, if you eat it, it's totally not a big deal. Probably some good flavor in there, but you know, it doesn't look very good. And now super simple. Everything is going to go into this pot right here. So all of my can you help scrape while I pour? It's heavy to hold this with just one hand, you know. Thank you, Adam. Okay, so the tao tiao has gone in. We're gonna add some palm sugar to give it some sweetness. So this will be like a salty, sweet kind of dressing. And then my crushed sesame seeds. And I'm gonna bring this to a simmer and let it simmer for just a few minutes to give the chance, give a chance for the sesame seeds to sort of infuse and give the sugar to dissolve. And then we will taste and add any more soy sauce. Meanwhile, while that is simmering, ooh, I'm going to mix up my thickener, which is just going to be cornstarch. You can do tapioca starch and a little bit of water. And this is just going to help the gravy thicken. You want to dissolve it because if you ever add dry cornstarch into hot liquid, you will have lumps out the wazoo you will never be able to get rid of. So that's good. I'm going to turn this up now and thicken it with my cornstarch. And then once you add it, you want to be stirring constantly so that it doesn't settle and then create clumps of thickened, unevenly thickened gravy. And then you want to bring this to a full boil. That's how you make sure that the cornstarch has fully activated. Ooh, ah, it looks perfect. Give me one minute. Oh, I'm just going to show you right now, fresh off the, the oven. Mm, that's exactly what you're looking for. Okay, let me just deal with my countertop and I'll be back. Before we move on, I'd like to tell you about today's sponsor, Skillshare. So if you love my show, I'm going to guess that you love to learn and you love to create. So you probably love Skillshare, which is an online learning community with thousands of classes on topics like photography, interior design, cooking, and even how to create a YouTube channel. 
Most classes are less than 60 minutes long and each one is made up of short lessons. So even if you're really busy, it's not hard to watch just a few lessons a day and before you know it, you're done. One class I really like is called Easy and Versatile Baking, The One Yeast Dough You Need to Know by Julia Tertian. And I love that it gives you a really solid foundation for bread baking, perfect if you're just getting started. So if you want to learn a new skill or explore a new passion, check out Skillshare and the first 1,000 people to click the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. And then after that, it's only $10 a month with an annual subscription. Oh, look at that. This is exactly what you want. A little bit of charredness, a sort of the edges in the corner. Now, before we cut into it, you have to let this rest for at least, I would say, 10 minutes before cutting into it. In Thailand, the pork is actually served room temp because the rice is hot, the gravy is hot, so you'll be fine. And yes, if you're wondering, do we still have other things to do? We do! We're gonna make the dipping sauce. What? There's gravy? and dipping sauce yes so before you freak out the dipping sauce is totally optional it's always served with cow mudang so i want to show you it's a vinegary dark soy sauce and with chilies in it that's used to sort of cut the richness and the sweetness of the gravy okay so i didn't used to eat it when i was a kid because it's spicy and vinegary um, but now as an adult i really appreciate the the contrast all right let's slice the pork Oh, I love it that this one has a little bit of fat. Ah! So you can see it's well cooked, which is for this you want it to be well done, but it's still juicy. Like it's not dry. See this? It's like, it's got a little bit of wetness. I don't know if you can see. Okay, got nice rice here and boom. Perfect. Look at that. Put an egg on there, some cucumber slices on there, fan them nicely. And then, the pièce de résistance. Wow, yes. Don't overdo it because you don't want it to be like overwhelmingly sweet gravy, but that is the perfect looking, oh my God. Oh, totally worth all that effort. And then if you wanna use the dipping sauce, I, I drizzle, I don't dip. You can just do a little bit on top, get a few chilies on there. Get some vinegary sharpness in there. Let's eat. Here we go. This piece with a little chili. Ah. Mm. This is one of the few things that I can confidently say, if you make it following this recipe, it will be better than what you can find on the street. Most important thing being you can pick good quality pork with fat in it and then cook it so that it's just done and not overcooked and it'll be juicier, more tender than any thing that you can find on the streets of Thailand. I promise you that. And also with the gravy, I add a lot of toasted sesame seeds which is gonna be more than what you can find on the street because sesame seeds, you know, they're not super cheap, right? But you can really bulk up that flavor and get a more complex thing going. I mean, when I started making this, I'm like, I'm never buying this again because the stuff on the street is always, the pork is always dry, always, 100%, most of the time dry and you only get a little bit. So the recipe, as always, will be on hotthaikitchen.com. And if you make it, tag me, post a photo on social media and tag me at Hot Thai Kitchen. I'd love to see it. And if you've tried the ones on, in Thailand and the one that you make, let me know what you think as well, how the two compare. Thank you to our Patreon members for supporting the show. And if you want to know what that's all about, you can check out the link in the description below. And thank you, as always, for watching. And I will see you next time for your next delicious Thai meal.